Okay, so uh, we're just going to start here and do some uh, nice first uh, stretches. And, you know, we talked a little bit about sustained pressure and sustained uh, stretch and how that opens up the joints and also the connective tissue of uh, the body. So we're going to do a little sustained stretch to try to not try, but open up the joints and the energy channel of the body. You know, if you're ever uh, in any uh, chat groups or anything about Chinese medicine or shiatsu or body work in general, there's all these uh, scientific theories moving around about how things work and why some don't and everything like that. But one thing uh, as far as uh, meridians uh, is that there's a pretty good um, realization that they're embedded in the fascia, like in the water-soluble uh, connective tissue of the fascia. So that within sustained stretch, since you change this viscosity uh, of connective tissue, it affects the meridian. So it opens the meridian stuff also. So nice sustained. And also, too, in this sustained pressure with the arms here, I'm starting palm up. And then I'm also going to, in keeping the pressure, just open the palm up to the outside. And one of the reasons is this is that the majority of our actions with our arms, if you're not going like this, is pulling, bringing things towards you. Yes? We're always bringing things towards us. And in bringing things towards you, your arm curls this way. Right? So when we open up, we uncoil this way. Right? And in doing sustained stretch, if you hold the stretch enough, uh, the person a lot of times um, experiences some, a little, they call fascial burning, where they feel a little more resistance or even some, I hate to say the word, uh, some discomfort in the areas where the connective tissue is tight because our body is supporting our action. Whatever we choose to do, it's not particularly judgmental. It's like, that's what you're doing? Okay. So that means that the tissue will either uh, shorten or lengthen around that particular action. So, so this, and then we just calm down, attention, check in, make sure your shoulders are relaxed, and focusing on your breath. You can breathe through your lunch. It's a little bit more cumbersome right now. And then we're just going to add some compression. So I'm just, again, uh, along with pulling, we usually get some shortness here. So in, in a muscular level, it's uh, the pec minor, particularly. Uh, but also, uh, the head, one of the heads of the bicep brachii and the coracoid brachialis, which relates to the yin meridian of the arm, which starts in the chest and ends on the hand, uh, the lung, the pericardium, and the heart, which starts in the armpit. It comes in between the bicep and the tricep, and then the soft portion of the forearm, in be and up on the hand between the fourth and fifth metacarpal, and on the side of the little finger. So one of the things we want to do to loosen up and introduce stretch is to stabilize here, and then just do some nice rotation and release. So it's compressed. And release, nice kind of stretch motion to open up uh, the neck. But also, um, when they talk about shoulders being turned in or shortness here, again, like I mentioned, we do pec minor quite a bit. And pec minor can relate to the beginnings of the lung brain. But also, one of the things that constitutes uh, shortness here is also the aforementioned pec of the bicep and the coracoid brachialis, because they all have common attachment at the coracoid muscles. So uh, in doing short, uh, and to try to open this up, we can take the palm of our hand and go right in the inside of the forearm, and then just bring the forearm back a little bit. So it's rolling uh, the muscles open.
come to the joint here, and we're going to stabilize the joint with our thumb and index finger and just lean to the side. Now this stretch is not only attachment, but there'll be a lot of time opening in the wrist. So again, the premise of opening the joints to help free up the energy flow. Uh, this particular one also good for just relieving some compression in the wrist joint, uh, which can aid in um, carpal tunnel. So just sustain pressure and then leaning back. You feel a little separation in the wrist. And then just finish up with some nice palmer compression. Uh, with the table in this position too, easy. Not too. I'm the considerate therapist today. You see that good lunch. So just sinking in. So I want you to try these different aspects here. Because you know you're working on someone and they perhaps have those Popeye-esque forearms that you know you can't just <laughs> really do anything to. So um, this knee is good, you know. Uh, in sustained pressure with a uh, Thai massage, also, you know, we facilitate all sorts of compression techniques. Because you, know, you can do more sustained pressure. I try not to look at the client when I'm doing this. <laughs> but it's really embarrassing for both of us. I really want to hear it. <laughs> and then we're going to uh, work the wrist a little bit. Now, uh, again, um, facilitating energy flow in, in the arm. In Chinese medicine, uh, these three meridians that I talked about, the lung, the pericardium, and the heart, there, there's these subos right at the wrist crease. And these particular acupressure points, subos, uh, these are called source points, and they balance the meridians. So if the meridian is too full or depleted, uh, these help um, balance the energy in the brain. So it's very important uh, to open up uh, this wrist crease here. So it's simple just by supporting from behind and then applying a little digital compression first. A lot of time you'll hear a little crepitation, a little noise. And then to do uh, three source points on the back of the hand. And we're going to do one which is uh, the large intestine uh, four hoku. So if you take the thumb and bring it towards the index finger, you'll see this crease here. And right at the top of the crease, you press and apply pressure up underneath the index finger. And perhaps feel a little bell tape. Okay. Uh, this is a common point for um, uh, for um, headaches uh, on the large intestine. Also, uh, it relieves all sorts of, uh, they say, constipation. So physical and mental also constipation. So if your head is really full and, and pardon me? No, stopping myself. Sorry. Oh, sorry for you stopping. <laughs> I didn't know it's a private conversation. <laughs> Sometimes that's how I learn. <laughs> so it's a very nice point. And plus also all subos along with whatever uh, they do to affect the meridian, they also have a good a ramification for relieving local pain. So if there is some pain here, uh, thumb, wrist, this is a good one because the meridian uh, runs right uh, through and up onto the face, so it's a good one. Also, too, uh, is okay, right? uh, there's one right in between the fourth and fifth uh, metacarpal on the back of the hand, just above the wrist. There's a little indentation. You feel that? The little indentation that's on the triple warmer. I'll talk you through this. These, these addition of these points really gives a dynamic to the work. I mean, we stretch, we compress, we're going to do a few more things, but the addition of the point. And also, I think, too, you know, if you're focusing on uh, doing SUBO, it just makes you more present and available in your work, right? Because, you know, a lot of the stretches, a lot of the movements are big, almost considered more yang, you know, more overt, a lot more movement. But this also cultivates that deeper sense of stillness, that internal. And in Chinese medicine, you know, they talk a lot about how that um, it's the underlying kyo or the feminine or the 
depletion that is uh, fueling all the outward action. You know, there's a saying in the classic text, um, behind every crime is a woman. So that means for every overt action that's taken on something, why they're doing that, they're trying to fill this depleted sense, which is represented uh, by the by a deeper uh, feminine. So it's a nice quote to bring up to a room full of women. So. And then the last one is on the side of the hand. And see if you can find this on yourself. Um, here is the pinky finger. All right. And if you just follow the pinky finger down until the bone runs out, you'll feel a little indentation on the side of the hand. And then you just laterally flex. Um, onto the side, the grimacer can be small intestine point. Very good to work. So again, just trace the bone down. Bone, 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 bone. No bone. There's a little indentation. You'll laterally flex in there. Small intestine. And we're going to work under the same premise as we did before. You may press in with a certain sense of curiosity and enthusiasm until they feel a dull ache. Excuse me for a second. Do you feel the dull ache? And then I'm just going to back off a little bit. You still feel? Still feel? So now I particularly am feeling uh, the connection right here, so I'm just going to hang out there. And that's how we do it. It's like if you say something to somebody either too loudly or too truthfully or too abrupt or but then if you cut back your action a little bit now like oh yeah what you said is true or whatever so same with the pressure okay nice and then a little rotation and a little finger pulling so uh, also uh, Chinese medicine wise uh, at the tips of every finger are points called ting points t-i-n-g and it's where the energy changes direction. So you want to try to keep those points open. So one of the ways to do that is if you just place the fingers in between your index finger and middle finger and just press down, keep the pressure, and then just pop that thing and make that little. And it's not the sound so much, it's the motion of it that coming across the tip keeps the point open. And then we're going to finish with this. Stretch the side. Stretch across. So now it's a nice deltoid stretch. But because here, uh, there's meridians that come on either side of the medial head of the deltoid. And um, you have a large intestine and triple one. So, but you want to change angles because there's three different heads. So you want to just change the angle up a little bit. And since we're stretching this so much, we're going to end with this, where we're going to put your shift over here. Panoramic sweep with the camera, please. <laughs> so we're going to do this. So we're going to come and sit. And so I'm supporting the arm like this. So my outside hand is supporting the elbow. And my inside elbow is going to come right in the soft tissue to address the beginning of the yin meridian but also the um, pec minor. And you want to make sure you're in the soft tissue and above the breast tissue. So you want to be between the humerus, head of the humerus, and the breast tissue in this nice concavity here. So you're just going to come in with the forearm and just lean in like this. Press it okay. So you lean in and then you can do a pin and stretch by just simply rotating the arm out. Because bringing the arm this way shortens the muscle, and if you're pinning and then bringing the arm out, you're pinning and stretching. So that's a nice uh, stretch. I'll just do one more. Transition into the other arm. 
try that much. 